Okay, welcome everybody to the November 7th Artilius Architecture Meeting. I think we're a little light because of all the time changes and stuff here in the States. Um, I don't have a lot on my list other than just checking to see where we're at with um, getting Jenkins set up and looking at that HTML plugin. So, Sasha, I know you're working with um, Arvin on some of that. Um, mm -hmm. Do you know where he was at as far as well, um, his Jenkins environment? No, I don't, I don't, I'm not too sure. I think he's actually waiting on me to do to help him with that. I don't think he's too sure how to do that. Um, and I did test it on my environment, <clears throat> and I got really far. I just got stuck on it trying to find uh, i was able to publish the report oh cool but i got i got stuck somewhere obviously i can't get it to work because i still need to do the i still need to connect with you about uh Chilius. but um the, a long a long story short story is that i broke my jenkins and i'm trying to redeploy it so i can get back to testing on my local and i for some for some other reason is caching my broken jenkins config some way and it doesn't want to deploy it keeps failing ah. um, i know what it is i just don't know how to fix it yet because it's i don't know why it's caching it somewhere so what i'm going to do is destroy all my um uh, all my storage classes and pvcs and pvs uh, persistent storage for jenkins yeah and see if i can just start again from scratch and clean up clean up on the nose i was like i know it's the worst timing i'm like come on man Jeez, when Jenkins breaks, it breaks bad. <laughs> oh, Jesus. It anyway. Like that. Right when you need it is when it breaks. And oh, was, no, it breaks was is, is Arvin running um, any but kind of... Work. Is he uh, running sorry, any just... kind of Kubernetes cluster, or is he just trying to do no. like a Docker Compose? No, no. Um, that's that repo you created for us, the Docker Compose. Because that's just easier for everyone to access. You know, everyone just has a Docker and then just run the Docker Compose command and then it'll fire up the two, it'll fire up Ortelius and Jenkins together, right? That's that's the easiest. Got it. Obviously, I, obviously I was testing ahead of time um, on my environment because I already had it, right? Until I broke yeah. my Jenkins. Um, and I, I started working on the the Docker Compose thing. So there is stuff there, but it just it still needs to be fine-tuned. You know? Okay. Because I think the main thing we want to focus on is somebody getting a running instance of Jenkins out there. Uh, mainly the person we should be focusing on getting Arvin um, a running version of Jenkins. And Ortelius can be secondary because we can just point, we get Jenkins just point to the SAS version of Ortelius. Oh, of course. Okay, uh, so uh, let's as, just do Jenkins. That's clever. Yeah, cool. just as a short-term solution. I know it's great to have everything all up and running locally, um, yeah, yeah. but it's not necessarily 100% uh, needed. The okay. Having Jenkins run locally um, versus like the host of Jenkins uh, is just going to make your life easier because you can install plugins and stuff like that, and you can go look under the covers uh, and see what it's doing on that front. Um, so that's mm. one of the things I think we should uh, just focus on is is getting a running version of Jenkins locally, and I think okay. you could just yeah 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 we... I think it just comes in a, a Docker container now that you just do mm. some volume mounts to to yeah, uh, exactly. launch. Yeah, that's what. Okay, so let me remove my Ortelia stuff because I I I. Um, it's actually yeah. Let me share it with everybody. You can all go take a look since we are in architecture and we can and we can talk tech. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so there's the link. Um, and I don't know if you want to share share your screen, Steve. Uh, you can go ahead, sure. Name, but oh, okay. Um, just so everyone else can follow along. And this is how far I got. Which desktop am I sharing? And uh, just just looking at that uh, Docker Compose real quick, 
um, you can actually take out the dependencies of uh, Jenkins being dependent upon the Ortelius microservices. So they can come up independent okay. of each other. And and is this tagging right, Steve? Do I do we need to use, if we when we get to I'll take I'll just comment out the Ortelia stuff for now, but um, going forward into the future, do you need do you ha you have to specify it like this, right? The actual version that you're using for each microservice, right? Uh correct, because that's the okay. way we um we tag everything based on basically the build, um, yeah. Yeah. so that's the way everything is tagged. We don't okay. have a latest tag for Ortelius. Um, that's yeah. just, just bad practices. So that's how come that hmm. there isn't a latest tag out there. Um, doesn't mean we can't create one uh, to make hmm. folks uh, make this like Docker Compose easier. Um, mm -hmm. We can change our CI CD pipeline to tag uh, as latest as well. Okay, cool. Yeah, so I just wanted to check that with you that when we do get there, that I am using the right stuff here for Tilius for people to have a local. But like you said, that's a really smart idea to just use the SAS version. Point, yeah. to, point Jenkins there, right? Yeah. Yeah. So you only, well, we only need this bit from 91, line 91. And right. And there's my volumes, and I'll take out the de depends on. Yeah. Yeah. That's cool. And then, you know, obviously you can. Um, we can still do a uh, a local uh, Ortelius as well, but it's not a requirement for us to figure out around mm. the, the the plugins and kind of the requirements that Tracy put out there for having a, the security dashboard inside of Jenkins. Um, you know, so because we have the SaaS, we can, mm -hmm. the, the Ortelia CLI can publish to the SAS version or publish to your local version or whatever, wherever you got it running. Um, mm -hmm. So that will, and then the plugin that we have should be able to pull from either place, um, whether okay. it's, you know, you just redirect the URL basically of where yeah. you're going to be uh, getting the data from for the dashboard. Yeah, exactly. Okay, cool. Then that actually makes it a lot easier. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Well, and I was thinking, I was thinking today, um, and I still, I, I still um, need to move uh, the old Ortelius, or I think it may have been the old Deploy Hub Jenkins plugin um, to a different repo and, and move it around. One of the things that I remember is that all of the plugins for like the Jenkins marketplace end up being in a Jenkins plugin repo. And then it's just like sub projects and stuff like that underneath the repo. So I got to go look and revisit that on how the Jenkins marketplace right. has changed in the last couple of years. Um, okay, cool. So we may just need to create a new um, repo out there inside of the Jenkins plugin sphere and um, use that. Cause that way it will, when you publish to uh, that repository, it'll actually go off and build the plugin on the Jenkins infrastructure and do stuff to add it to the catalog and things like that. Um, there, that way you can do like a, a plugin install from inside of the Jenkins UI and it'll go find it and download and all that stuff versus trying to upload mm. it from local stuff, which is a little more okay. convoluted, put it that way. Mm. And I was thinking um, if that HTML one gets us close, uh, that HTML plugin is probably going to be a uh, an open source plugin project as well that we can fork and modify to do our stuff with. So that will okay. give us a, if, if that one kind of looks like it's going to get us what we want, then um, we can go fork that and make uh, modifications to kind of tailor it for Ortelius. Oh, cool. Okay. Cool. Um, yeah, because my understanding was that Jenkins keeps all its config in Jenkins home. So that's why I had that volume mount there to mount uh, like we were doing when we did the Terraform one, we were mounting it on our local machines into temp. Right. And I thought, oh, well, I'll just do the same thing with Jenkins, you know, just mount it into temp to keep your config. 
so that it always right. starts up at the same config. Yeah. So that's kind of. Um, I hope that helps clarify what we what we kind of need to do. No, big time, and I think and having the deploy have, I mean, the SAS version is going to be that's a, that's going to speed things up much much a lot. Yeah, because it just uh, it'll uh, make things run. Uh, you don't you're not running as many containers locally, so you get a better like in your case because you got your Raspberry Pis. It's really not uh, as big of a uh, a shift. You know, you're, you're offloading your processing over to the Raspberry Pis, but like exactly. Arvin, who's going to be running everything locally, uh, may not mm -hmm. have the resources to run that big of a uh, a node. Exactly, and a lot of people have that problem. I think they only have their local laptop or desktop or whatever they're using, right? Yeah, like when I run um, run Ortelius in kind, you know, for it to boot up on my machine, it takes uh, probably twenty minutes for it to download all the containers and start it all up under kind. Um, it, yeah. it, you know, it works once it gets going, but it's just slow. Yeah, it's just slow. Yeah, it's true. But you make a mini, I make a mini me version. Yep. <laughs> a mini me or did it? <laughs> yeah, I may, I may have to, uh, put some, ra <laughs> some, some raspberry pies on my, uh, Christmas, uh, wish list. Tracy's in the call, Steve. Steve <laughs> <laughs> All I want is raspberry pie for Christmas. That's the, only, de raspberry the only dessert. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> cool. Yeah. All right, cool. Uh, so does that help, uh, Sasha, clarify things? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it does. Um, cool. And I just, I just deployed Jenkins now. It was deployed uh, using the... Yeah, so Might even work. yeah, see if he can connect to it. Ah. Well, it was on localhost 8080. That's what it says here. Yeah, but... You may have a port forwarding error. Uh, I might have to. Hmm. Oh. oh, wait a sec. I think I know. I think I used 81. Oh, something's happening. Just thinking about right. it. Let me read it. Let me read it. Right. Okay. Oh, I think I'll have to go back and just quickly down it and up it again. And I must put D on, otherwise I end up with the logs. Right. Okay. Dash D. Like that, so right? I think to make so it a ten. So while you guys are looking at that, I just want to bring up a couple of things. Um, yeah, go ahead. That's that's basically what I wanted to touch base with on the 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 Jenkins and the Jenkins plugin side. Okay. Yeah. Hey Joseph and hi Kate. Thanks for joining. Um, Joseph, uh, have you had a chance to take a look at that tutorial? Um, and is there anything that you're working on that we could help you with today? Um. Yeah, I got a chance to take a look. Um. I tried to sign up, but I couldn't get, I couldn't sign up. So I actually have a call with Sasha tomorrow to help me with a few things, but I'll give it a go again hey, today. Share your screen see and let me see what happened when you tried to sign up. Okay. Yeah, I'll stop sharing. Just a sec. Easy. Yeah, it looks like the site's up. Let me... I'm on between two different okay, computers. This is it. I'm trying to pull up the the site. A bit of a slow network here. Okay, here it is. Let me share my screen. Okay. Cool. Okay, so when I click on sign up, it takes a bit of time, and then oh, it sends me that? to this page. I need to send. I need to fix that. Oh, 
Okay. Yeah. Okay. So go back. Go back to the documentation. Okay. That I sent you. Yeah. There, right yeah. there. That's a sign up right there. This one. Yeah. So scroll up. Oh. No. 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 That's the form. That is actually the sign up form right there. Okay. So scroll down where it says sign down. up. There's your company name. There's your project name. You need to fill that out. If, don't oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, you need to fill that stuff out. First. Oh, fill it out right there in mm -hmm. line. Yeah, exactly. Huh. It looks like okay. it just jumps to the page. Yeah, maybe. I don't know if it's the browser I'm using. I'm using Brave. Yeah. Let me take a look at that. That's weird that you, when you click on it, it... Click on it one more time and see what it, what, if it just takes you to the... Yeah. What what page is it jumping you to? Okay. So it's taking you there. So it's kind of like in a loop. All right. Yeah. Yeah. That's interesting. I've never seen that before. I'll have to play with it on uh, on Chrome and see. Okay. Yeah, I can see all the little aliens showing up in your tabs. You're, be, you're being you're being attacked. Okay, thank you. We'll get that fixed today. My, my, Mar right. Mars invades. Yeah, Invasion of Mars. I don't know why that I, that iframe isn't working the way because I I tested it. It was fine, so I'm not sure what the heck happened there. So we'll check it out, and then uh, I'll, I'll I'll shoot you an email, Joseph, to let you know it's working. And and okay. which which browser are you using? Brave. I get the same thing, Steve. Okay. As I long, can repeat it. Okay, as long as we can recreate it, we can figure out why. Yeah. I think it's just the way that iframe's created. Something with the. Yeah, I don't know, but I, we'll 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 check it out. And I'll check out the button on the on the other page as well. Yeah. Let me see if the. Hold on, just a second here. I'll give you. I'm going to give you another page that you can go and so you can move forward and you don't have to wait. Okay. We're trying to get it. Get make sure that people aren't going directly to the. Let me see if this I fit. Yeah. Oh wow! Even the one from. Yeah, the neither one of the iframes works, Steve. Even the one that's in the Deploy Hub site. Huh. Okay. I will have to take a look to see what's what's going on underneath the covers. Okay, I'll 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 send you a t uh, email, Joseph. Um, and okay. then on another note, I am um, I am submitting a proposal for the Continuous Delivery Foundation uh, for a, a a SIG, a special interest group that is focused on CI/CD cybersecurity. Um, the goal will be uh, to start defining a framework for cybersecurity in CI/CD as well as to start bringing in the CDF projects and making sure that they are secured and that we uh, can start consuming their data to start exposing um, their open SSF scorecards their, and their vulnerabilities. Um, I'm going to submit it today or tomorrow to get uh, approval, to get, get moving forward. I have shared it with the TOC. They're all pretty happy about it. So I'm going to share it with everybody on uh, this call today. Uh, so if you want to make comments, um, but it will be a broader, this is, this is not an Ortelius effort it, in particular, it is a continuous delivery foundation effort to really have a conversation about what tools we should be bringing into the CI CD pipeline to add security to the process. Um, so if any of you are interested in getting involved in that, I'm, I'm just letting you know ahead of time that that's what, um, that's what, that, that's, that's, it's coming down the pipes. And I'm hoping to get um, somebody that there was uh, somebody from Spinnaker and somebody from Jenkins said that they would make sure that somebody from their community was on that on that special interest group. Oh, Steve, awesome. we can't hear you. I, I would be interested in that. Great. I, I had a feeling that Kate and Elizabeth, it might be a fun one for you to get involved in too. Steve, I'm not sure why, but we can't hear you. I don't know if you're on mute. He is. Yeah, okay. I am. So I just dropped the link uh, to one of the documents I've been working from for 
uh, Los Alamos, um, and it has to do with uh, the executive order. So there's a higher level executive order than um, CISA and DISA and a couple other uh, NIST have broken that down into kind of like tasks. Um, so this is one of them, uh, the, the 218, 800 218 uh, is what they call the secure software framework. Um, and it's all around the CICD process, 90% of it is, put it that way. Um, and it gives you things like, um, you should have like signed commits, you should have um, uh, artifacts published um, and signed uh, artifacts. So there's a bunch of stuff that we can use Ortelius um, to kind of track whether people are doing it. So um, the OpenSSF scorecard gives you some basics, but there's a lot more details um, that need to be kind of tracked um, further down in the process. There's another one. Um, this one, the, the 800 218 is um, specific to just applications in general. And then they have another document that's specific to containers um, and how containers are running. Um, and things like on the container side is you shouldn't run a, a production uh, container and a development container in the same cluster. Um, so just so you know, I have listed four documents that this particular working group SIG will, will focus on. One is the NIST Secure Software Development Framework. Another one is IBM's X-Force Threat Landscape Report. Perfect. The third one is the NIST Cybersecurity Framework. And the final one is the Google Securing the AI Software Supply Chain. Oh, so awesome. Those... I didn't even think about the AI front of it. Yeah, so all four of those are, are there and I have links to them. So if you, you know, if you want to dig into them uh, in the future, this has not been approved yet. I'm just, tr I'm just trying to get it approved. So um, I, it's, it, I didn't mean to interrupt you, Steve, but I just want to point out that that's already listed in the, the, uh, um, in the proposal. Awesome. Yeah, there ends up being uh, close to, if we're going to include all those other documents, we'll have... Uh, a checklist of about a hundred, about two hundred different things that are needed to secure your pipelines. I'm totally uh, worried about um, trying to get everything on those lists, but I think it's good reading and it gives us a good starting point. What I really want to do is focus on just what we already are consuming: Open SSF and for reporting vulnerabilities from OSV Dev is a lot. Yep. And we certainly could uh, uh, start adding Ortelius to one of the Jenkins builds. And what I would like to do as well is add to Ortelius a, the ability to create notifications if a new vulnerability has been found, right? So Ortelius can scan. What we usually scan once we open up the application or component, we scan for all the new stuff. We really should be scanning on a regular basis. And if a new high risk vulnerability shows up from that scan, we should be sending at least a Discord message or a Slack message. May, may I ask some questions uh, real quick? Yeah. Um, and if it's off subject that then, you know, we can take this offline. But um, the one question I have is when you say scan, one of the things that have has always been asked from a uh, cybersecurity, there's no, Agents, right? You're you're scanning from a. How how are you scanning? There is a published site called OSV Dev, um, mm -hmm. and OSV Dev I think is sponsored by Google, and they go and they look for uh, new vulnerabilities. And when one is reported, it gets published to that uh, rep repository. Let's just say. Um, so we have the SBOM information for components, and then we aggregate that up to applications. When we open up, when you go into Ortelius and you open up a component that Ortelius, uh, one of our mm -hmm. microservices, it goes and it looks at the SBOM, and then it scans 
the OSV dev for the packages in the SBOM and reports a new, the, the, the current set of vulnerabilities. Not necessarily, we're not, it, the other way to do it is that when you create your container, you do a scan, you look for vulnerabilities and you clean them up and then you push it forward. But what happens is the next day, a new vulnerability has been found. Mm -hmm. So what we're doing is scanning, we're, we're looking at OSV dev for those packages and coming back with those vulnerabilities. So scanning is kind of like the wrong term. We're not scanning OSV dev. We're looking up um, based on the, the, the SBOM that was generated. Are there any new vulnerabilities at this moment? So when you generate the reports, we'll be able to give you what that vulnerability stance looked like for that moment. Now, 10 minutes from now, there could be a new vulnerability that was reported that will cause the report to be different um, for a package possibly. So um, it's more of a real time lookup or right. a, sna a snapshot point of view lookup of your vulnerability stance. Does that make sense? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Okay, um, and then another side question, um, completely off, but I, I just saw the four that you listed um, as reference, you know, you talked about X-Force, Tracy. Um, is there any reason why OWASP wasn't brought in? Uh, no, O-W-A-S-P? No, we just can't do everything. That's okay. Fine. No. No particular reason. Right now, we're looking at the ones that people use the most common, and mm -hmm. um, you know, any of them can be used. Okay. One there... reason why I'm wondering, and, and um, it's just because it had it traditionally in the marketplace. I'm sorry, I had a little bit of cold. OWASP has always been um, application based. That's all. But. Does that, does, you know, like when we were looking at domains, um, that, that was the only reason why I was thinking about OWASP. Like it was always something that was asked of me from application people. So OWASP, it normally is specific. I thought OWASP was really around API security, but maybe I'm wrong. Um, it may have become more focused on API security, but, you know, and, and perhaps it's something it, that wouldn't be surprising. Um, but a decade plus ago, OWASP was, was really one of these things that looked at dynamic and static testing and within application vulnerabilities. But it's not to say that that hasn't changed. Yeah, yeah I mean, I, I... I don't That's think all. That it, right it's now, OWASP does not. I don't think they have a, a published location for new vulnerabilities, and that's really okay. what we're trying to do. We're okay. looking at we're using OSV Dev as a place to say where's the new vulnerabilities that were found uh, ten minutes ago, mm -hmm. and does the does the application that Ortelius managing is it impacted? Yeah, and and I think Google too was a really good choice in that. I, I just want. Quick yeah, question. so we're going to kind of uh, carve out a piece of the pie to focus on and mm -hmm. um, look at how the S bombs and vulnerabilities are um, can be reported upon and notified upon in a more efficient way. Um, when you look at some of the other pieces in all those documents, they talk about, like you said, you know, um, runtime monitoring of vulnerabilities, um, and that gets into things like CrowdStrike and um, agents running in the um, in the runtime environment to catch vulnerabilities. That's kind of uh, that's way out of our scope um, right. that okay. we're going to be looking at. Yeah, because it's not really doing anything with code level vulnerabilities, but certainly if we right. feel like in the future there's something that static um, static application security testing uh, results that we should bring in, um, then we could look at doing that in the future. Right now, though, I want to I want to highlight what we've already done instead of adding mm -hmm. features. Um, totally. We have, yeah. We don't. Yeah, we don't have adoption, so we could add a bazillion features and it wouldn't matter. 
Right, but right. What we need to do is celebrate and 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 market to the mm -hmm. communities what we've already done. And what we do that is very interesting is the ability to do this continuous code level right. vulnerability scanning. And so that we can be as popular as OWASP, right? Right. <laughs> are, well, are tools like, yeah. I think it's called Zap or something. And and like I like I I've said like when I've had as I've taken a step back to and in the process you know, thinking about cybersecurity overall and where we've gone and, and this whole Groundhog's Day that I see, you know, looking, going from this perspective is, is I, I think this, pers like going to the very bottom of, of how we're doing this, I, is a very interesting, is a very interesting idea. So, I, I mean, I, I do think, I, I'm not questioning you guys. I, I mean, I think you're, you're definitely going about this right. I was just, you know, yeah, I, absolutely. But I, I mean, I don't want to, I, I'm going to leave it on the, on the, the, the pile here of potential mm -hmm. tools that we could um, integrate with, mm -hmm. uh, with the focus of the four documents that the, uh, that most people are following for uh, providing, for doing security. Mm -hmm. The four documents being the ones that I talked about, the, the security framework, the NIST cybersecurity uh, standards, right. those. They don't talk about necessarily things like, um, uh, attack proxies because it's right. that's out that we're, that's for us that's not code level that's not supply chain stuff now right. we could be considering taking I know that o OWASP may do some kind of dependency checking um, but I don't know when it, when that is, occurs if that's a tool that's used at the build time or something that we could mm -hmm. consume and, and report on on a regular basis if it's static or if it's dynamic Right. So, and, so and what I'll say is an area that we think we should look at. We can do some research on what o OWASP um, results that we might want to include in our dashboard. And, and the only thing that, that I would add, I mean, and just moving away, because, oh, you know, from OWASP is um, supply chain became, and I'm sure you're coming across this, became like one of the biggest buzzwords for lack of a better um better term yeah, like it is a buzzword it was created by somebody we know quite well <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and it really it, it was just it seemed like with customer upon customer upon customer it was supply chain became like the number one like just talk to me about supply chain and, and i understand it it's it's a good a good way to think about it so you know, OWAS from that perspective, yeah, I, 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 it was just a question I had, but I agree yeah. with the process of, of what you're going through. Not, not that it, it matters one way or the other, whether I agree, but it, it's, I just want to be able to understand it in my head. Yeah. Yeah. And so when yeah, you. We're really focused on code level vulnerabilities, not necessarily like watching um, transactions and trying to see what attacks are out there, or potential attack vectors that we could work with. That's not that's outside of our scope. We are yeah. really looking at dependencies of open source software coming into the supply chain and tracking the vulnerabilities for them. Yeah, and and that's truly open source is the biggest cybersecurity headache. It, it's a nightmare. Oh yeah, that's yeah. why we're that's why we're focused on it. it it's brilliant. Yeah, thank you. And the, the, but please, I I sent everybody a connection, uh, a, a link to that document. Um, take a look at it. Please make comments if you think we should include anything else in it. Uh, I have not listed specific tools in that. I've made sure I stayed away from doing that because I don't know if that's what we want to be doing at this point. Um, yeah. But uh, it's out there. And on that, I have to jump because I do have another call. Yeah. And and real quick, um, the. Uh, those documents will talk about the same topic in a slightly different way. So, like, um, you'll see a, th a lot of stuff around separation of environments, a separation of networks, um, those type of things. And that's that's going to be referred to in the multiple documents. So, even though it's, it seems like a lot of information between four documents. There's a common thread between all of them that you'll be able to follow pretty easily. Um, so just just don't be overwhelmed, put it that way. <laughs> okay. 
Any other questions? No, but up till this, I got, I got Jenkins up and running now. So if anybody pulls that repo now, I can fire up Jenkins. Okay, if you could let Arvin know on that front. Okay, cool. And, and okay. let him know that you have a, a, a running uh, Docker Compose for Jenkins so he can um, start working with his plugins. Cool, I'll do that. All right, cool. All right, thank you, everybody. We'll Bye. be in touch. Cheers. Thank you. We'll see you. Bye-bye.